Hello and welcome back to David's Closet. Um, it's been a week or so since I posted a video. Um, so I took a week off for a vacation and then um, three years of avoiding this, I finally got COVID. So that was exciting. So that's why there was no video last week. I wasn't feeling well enough to make one. Um, and I was coughing and I still have a little bit of a cough, but definitely obviously over it now. So you'll probably see a lot of cuts in this because I'll be coughing a little bit. But this is just going to be a really, really quick video. Uh, this was a tag that I was tagged in by Toad's Gene, one of my favorite YouTubers here. And um, it's basically five bags that are love at first sight. I watched his video while I was sick. Um, so I hope I remember everything about it, but I believe that's, that's basically it. So, um, kind of like his video, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail on these bags. I'm looking at them right now. They're laid out on my bed in front of me. Um, they all have their own videos. Um, I will try to remember to link those below. If not, you can just go to my channel, click on my videos and you can scroll through and find each of these bags. They have either an unboxing, which I think they all have an unboxing. Um, but I'm going to go through maybe a few things that I love about them. So yeah, and one of these may kind of be a surprise. I don't know. I'm looking at my purse tower too. There's actually a lot of bags for me that were love at first sight. So I just picked the five that kind of attracted me. And I tried to kind of vary it by brand a little. Um, some runner-ups are my... And I'm, it's right here in my tower. You can't see it. But my Louis Vuitton Tivoli PM that I just unboxed. And then my Louis Vuitton Turin MM. Those are the runner-ups. And then at the end of this, I'm going to do a bonus bag that was not love at first sight. And that'll be really interesting. So, before we get into anything, I'm going to do bag of the week. And I'm getting ready to change it today, so I'm trying to decide what bag to change to. But the bag of the week is my Coach Tate carry-all. Um, this is from the retail line. This is the one I paid full price for. Um, I did unbox a color block version that I paid like $200 for um, when they discontinued the bag and they were available in the reserve on the outlet. Let's get into the tag. Um, first bag that was love at first sight actually is my Coach Tate carry-all. And I believe this is $29. Um, this bag, when I saw it online, I just thought it was absolutely stunning. There was always a smaller version. I believe it's the carry-all the Tate Carry All 18 or something, and it was a super cute bag, and it had the same detail right here, the belt with the, you know, tie belt and the little horse and carriage buckle, all that cute stuff, but it was really, really small, and I talk about it in the video where I unboxed this, that that's a bag I liked, but it was just too small and a little bit too dainty for me, I don't know, it just, it wasn't my vibe size-wise, but the bag itself was beautiful, so when they released this larger size, I died and I actually pre-ordered it. Um, so very, very excited. Love this bag. I don't carry it as much as I thought I would. It's a little bit too structured. Um, I like a little bit more of a floppy bag. I've kind of learned, even though ironically, most of my bags are not. Um, but it does carry a ton of stuff. Everything can shove in there nicely. Um, nothing crazy. I try to keep the side pockets kind of almost empty just because I don't want any weird imprints on the leather even though there are a couple just from wear it's kind of that glove tanned leather um and it does have feet but love this bag it was in fact love at first sight um I just I had to have it um to me it kind of gives off Hermes vibes as far as like Kelly Birkin kind of look but of course full price was only about $600 versus you know, $20,000. So I absolutely love this. It was love at first sight. And this is one that definitely will not leave my collection. Now my color block one might be something that I eventually get rid of. I haven't used it yet. Um, it still has a tags on it. It's actually in better condition than this one. This one came a little bit rough, I thought. And I thought maybe it was just because the leather was like, you know, that beautiful, like worn look leather, but there's definitely some veining in this, and I don't know. That one, I think, is actually a little bit better shape. Um, I also haven't used it, so that's also probably why. But I don't know. I just don't see myself grabbing it. I bought it because I was just... 
I mean, this was $600, and that one I think was less than 200 or something. I don't remember the exact price I paid for it. Um, but it did come from the reserve section on the outlet, so check that section out. Especially when the seasons are getting ready to end, because anything they discontinue that they put on clearance in the outlet or the retail stores that haven't sold yet will then go to the reserve. Sometimes they're actually more expensive in the reserve than they were on clearance, sometimes not. So just kind of keep an eye on it. So the second bag that was definitely love at first sight for me is my Gucci Ophidia tote. And this is in navy blue Supreme GG print with the antique silver hardware. So this bag <clears throat> I just fell in love with. I always liked the Ophidia tote over like the Louis Vuitton never fall because i liked that the handles were on a d-ring so they could flop down without bending increasing the leather though gucci since i purchased this has increased the price of this bag this is still significantly cheaper than a never full granted you don't get the pouch that's the only difference you don't get the, the detachable pouch but i just like this a little better it was a little bit less common and i like things that aren't the most common sometimes i like to have things that are a little bit different so the original bag, or the the regular print, which is like that brown color that you think of, that was not love at first sight. This bag was. Uh, we were at Caesars Palace Forums in Vegas um, about a year ago or so. Um, I think it was back in April. And I had purchased my Louis Vuitton Sarah wallet that same trip. And we were walking through the stores. We were getting ready to leave. It was our last full day. And... I walked, I was like, let's just go into the Gucci store. I'd never really been a big Gucci fan, so I'm like, you know, I don't know, but let's just go look. And from the back of the store, I could see this bag. And I thought it was black at first. And I was like, I have to have it, have to have it. And then when I got closer and realized it was navy blue, I had to have it anymore. So it was just complete love at first sight. I ended up not purchasing it while we were there because I was worried about how I'd get it home because the Gucci box that came in was huge. This is a big bag. So I actually ordered it online. I saved like probably $160 not buying it in Las Vegas. So could not complain. Um, I think I paid about uh, $1,300 for this. Now I believe they're $1,600. Um, absolutely love it. It's a great bag. I don't use it as much as I thought I would because it is huge. But once in a while I do pull her out and I like to use it. This is something that's never going to leave my collection, but this in fact was love at first sight. The next one, I don't know if this will be a surprise to anyone or not, but it's my Prada satchel. I don't really know the name of this bag. I've seen it listed under a couple, a couple different names. It has the brass hardware, zipper. It has the rolled handles. It's this gorgeous navy blue color. I also have this in black because um, I just really like the style of bag. It's Speedy-like, but it's leather unlike a Speedy that's just canvas. Um, and it's Prada, which is my favorite. Um, no, I'm not sure if this was like a Prada outlet item or not. I think maybe it was, but I could be wrong. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I love it. Absolutely love this bag. And the blue one is my most special. Um, I did pay a little bit more for this. Actually, quite a bit more. I paid over double for this one than I did my black one, which was in a little bit more rough shape. Though I have fixed that bag, and I'm going to do a video on that if I haven't already. Um, I don't remember. My brain's a little foggy. But I saw this online, and I purchased this bag instantly. I didn't even think about it. I was like, this bag is gorgeous. I love it. I have to have it. So this bag is love at first sight. This is a very floppy, unstructured bag. Right now, of course, it's stuffed really well, so it looks structured. It, in fact, is not. I have made my black one structured because it wore a lot more. Whoever owned that bag wore that bag daily. Um, and even the handles are a little bit cracked on the glazing on that bag, so someone used that bag a lot. This one definitely was carried, but I do not think it was carried as much. So this one doesn't quite need the help supporting itself when it's not stuffed for storage. Um, but I absolutely love this bag. In fact, love at first sight. Never, ever, ever leaving. I also don't have a lot of color variety in my bag. So that's like, other than my Gucci, that's the only blue bag that I have that's pretty much not brown or black. So I love that bag. So number four here will not be a surprise to anyone, anywhere. It's the Speedy 25. Speedy 25 was love at first sight. When I bought my first Speedy, it was my Speedy 30, the bandolier in the Damien Ben. 
and I bought it on the website. I had never purchased Louis Vuitton before. Um, that's back in the day when you could actually order stuff on the website and get it sent to your house and not have to, you know, scour. And now I hear rumors that they're no longer going to sell canvas items online at all. You have to go to a store to get them. They're making it really hard to obtain their items, which to me is just very frustrating. Um, it definitely will increase my purchasing of Fashion File, which is where 90% of my stuff comes from anyway. Um, but I purchased the bandolier because I thought I would want it. Mistake, would never do that again. And then... I bought the 30 because back when I started carrying handbags, I thought the bigger the bag, the better. Because to me, I don't know, it looked more masculine. I don't know. I was I was definitely not thinking, you know, trying to figure it out. So, love my 30. I don't ever see me getting rid of it. A, it's not really worth much because there's so many of them on the market. It's hard to get a good price for them. But when I saw the 25 in person for the first time, perfect size. Absolutely love it. Complete love at first sight. I'm not gonna go into much detail. You guys know how much I love these. I have the Azure, this Abine, and the Monogram from 1993. Um, absolutely love these. I actually want another Monogram one that's not my birth year bag, so I don't have to worry about it as much. So I'm kind of on the hunt for just a cheap one. Um, Autumn Beckman, love her. We'll tag her below. She just purchased a Bandolier 25 in the Abine. Um, and she got it from the real real. I have never purchased from the real real. I have mixed feelings about it from the reviews that I've seen, but they have some really good deals on speedies right now. And I want to get one for about 500. I don't expect it to be in good condition. I expect it to be way worse condition than my 93, which that was me pointing at it in the glass case. Like you can see it. Um, but I just want one, a monogram one that I can carry and not worry about. It's not priority on my list because I have a lot of monogram bags I do carry. I have my Turan. I have my, all my monogram are on this tower. My Turan, my Speedy 25, my Tivoli, and then my uh, Montaigne MM here as well. So I have a lot of those that I can carry uh, in place of my Speedy so I don't damage her. Um, so not in a rush. When I want to have a monogram moment, I have plenty of choices. This bag, of course, was love at first sight. Number five is my favorite bag of all times. Love this bag. I'm going to be careful because I have it stored and I'm really particular how I store this bag because it was the most expensive bag I have and I just want to make sure it's taken care of. So, love at first sight is the Chanel Grand Shopping Tote. So, I'm just going to do a little close up. We've all seen my videos on her. Um, I got this from Fashion File. Great condition, it's the older model. I love it. Now I'm gonna go put her back in her home in the closet because I worry so much about this bag. I'm a little OCD about that bag, so I went ahead and put her away. Uh, I'll throw some pictures up here if I need to show anything. But that bag, even before I started buying bags, I would see pictures of that. Um, there's an episode of Will and Grace, there's probably a couple, but one in particular that I can remember where Karen Walker has it and she's carrying it on her shoulder. And since I saw it there, I think which is probably the first place I ever saw it, I thought that was the most beautiful bag ever. Because most Chanel bags are the flap, small, you know, shoulder bags. This was a tote. I do like totes. I like not huge bags, but I like a good medium-sized bag, which it is. Um, ever since then, I had to have one. And I loved it. And I had been scouring, scouring, and scouring. And in my video of the unboxing of that bag, you, I kind of go over how long I looked for that bag and how much... You know, I paid for it. I believe I paid twenty eight ninety five, um, which Fashion File in that case definitely underrated the condition of that bag. So they had it listed as very good. I think that bag is actually considered excellent because a those bags are discontinued. I believe twenty fifteen is when they stopped making them. So even if you have the oldest bag that they made, the, the the last one in production, it's over five, six, seven years old and. You know, those bags, being that they're larger, I kind of feel a lot of them were used for work bags and things, so they get a lot of work and wear. Um, so I think personally that one should be classified as excellent because it's also, I believe, from like 2007 or 2008. I don't quite remember exactly which. It was right before they changed the leather, uh, a little bit of the design. Like the CCs on mine are stitched, a patch that's stitched onto the bag. And the newer version, I think it was 2009 or 10 when they changed it, um, it's just embedded into the the, the stitching print on the bag. Um, and then they changed the hardware type. They changed a little bit about the bag um, to make it, I think, probably a little more cost-effective, let's be honest. 
they're a corporation, they want to make money. Um, so I love that mine's the older one. Um, just absolutely love that bag. So now the moment you've been waiting for, because this video is not short, like I said it would be, a bag that was not love at first sight. This, the Coach Pillow Tabby, was not love at first sight. When this bag first came out, I thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever. And even in my unboxing, I keep hitting this, even in my unboxing, I told you guys, ridiculous. But the more I saw her, the more I realized she's absolutely stunning. She is beautiful and she is a moment. And I don't care if it's fast fashion, which I don't think it is. I don't care if it's something that's gonna go out of style. I love this bag. I wish I could have got it on sale, but they're not discontinuing them. Um, it barely fits on my shoulder. I don't usually carry this way because I don't want to squash or ruin it, but I love her now. But it took over a year for me to decide that I actually love this bag, so not love at first sight. So never count things out is kind of where I'm going with this. So, thank you so much for watching and putting up with my video. This is the first video after I got sick, so please bear with me if you are bored. Um, please comment below if you have questions about any of these bags. Um, if you saw a bag and, you know, you were kind of curious, you know, love at first sight, what does that mean? You know, for me, it means the second I saw it, I knew I wanted it. Now, would I buy it? I don't know. I see a Birkin, and to me, that's love at first sight, but I can't afford a Birkin, so that's going on the back burner, right? Um, but let me know, you know, any bags that you have. Maybe you have some of these bags. Um, maybe there are bags that you know I do have that I didn't include on this list, like the Tivoli and the Turan. You can ask me why were these not on your love at first sight list, and I can kind of go over that with you. Um, you know, just all the things, let me know. Let me know your thoughts on some of these bags. Um, I always love to read comments about what you guys think. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, um, I also want to thank Toach Gene for tagging me in this and I will link his video below. And then in his video, he has links to the creators who worked with him to create the tag as well. So watch their videos, they're really, really good too. I really want to connect with some of those YouTubers as well. So maybe I'll tag them as well if I can fit it all in the thing. Or more so if I can remember to do it when I edit the video. That's usually the hardest part, right? It's just remembering. So, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Toast Gene. I can't wait to see the next tag. Um, I absolutely love tag videos. Um, I've tried to start a few of my own, but they never work. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.